On this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between driving in your car and staying in a room versus pulling your camper and staying at a campgrounds. I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. Oh. Here we go. On today's video, I am talking about camping versus having a room. And, you know, with all this coronavirus stuff going on and everything, I didn't want to just be sitting at the house. And I had to go show in Aniana today. So I was going to go to Palisades Park. And, well, that was closed. So I looked up. This is called Horse Pins 40. It's $10 a day. They have hiking trails and it says that it goes to a bluff. I know this is crazy and this is close to my home and I have never been here ever. So I figured we'd walk around and talk about the pros and cons of camping versus a room. Well, I am hoping that y'all are having an awesome day. I know that it's tough staying in, but you know, in Alabama, we can get out and do hiking or outdoor activities. So I figured this would be a great day. The weather is beautiful. We would get out and explore some while we do our video. What made me decide to do this video? Oh, gotta stop and look real quick. It's an elephant rock. Roll Tide. But what made me decide to do this is because last year, if you watched our video of us going to Charleston, we camped. And then this year, we decided to go back to Charleston, but we had some friends and everything that we had to meet. That we weren't camping, so we would be staying in a room. So we decided to go to Charleston a few days before we met up with them. So I figured, why not just do a video talking about the price differences and the pros and cons of camping versus a room. Now, the prices that I used are from our trip when we went this February. I just used gas prices and everything from then. I haven't been working out. You can tell. Look, I'm about to die. There is just rocks everywhere here. And tell you, I'm gonna be so lost. I'm not gonna know how to get out of here. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. All right, so from our house to Charleston is 451 miles in about seven hours, depending on how many times you stop. And as you know, with a camper, we're gonna stop a lot more because we have to fuel up the truck and everything because it takes a lot more gas to pull a fifth wheel. As far as room prices, ours was 198 a night, but the average is about 250 in downtown Charleston because we, if we're gonna stay somewhere, we figured we'd just stay downtown. James Island, where we camped, was only $54 a night. So it's a big difference in prices. When you're staying in a camper, you're gonna cook dinner more. You're gonna be able to take a lot more food and everything. Where in a room, the room that we got didn't have a kitchen. So we're not gonna cook as much, which being in Charleston, 
we were all about eating out. So we didn't mind that on this trip. Now, I have put together some pros and cons of camping versus a room. For the room, some pros are, you can take a really long shower and it's a lot bigger than in the camper. That is definitely a pro for me because I like my space and I like, like taking long, hot showers. In a room, because you're in your car and you're not pulling your camper, you're able to move from place to place quicker. Also, like in Charleston, our car was parked in a parking deck and we actually could walk to everywhere. When we were staying at James Island, we would go get in our truck, we would drive downtown, find a place to park, which Charleston is a hard place to find things to park. Well, then you would pay by the hour or whatever. When we were in Charleston staying downtown, like literally we could walk everywhere and never had to move the car if we didn't want to. Another thing is in a room, somebody else cleans up your room when you're done. Where in a camper, when you get back home, you gotta wash all the sheets, you gotta clean up everything from you being there. So that to me is a con because I don't like cleaning up so much. Now, some cons of being in a room is you don't always have everything you need. You don't, you can't take everything. Another thing is I'm a very organized person and when it comes to a, a hotel room or anything, everything doesn't have this place. I don't know where that place is and you're not there long enough to establish that kind of place. In my camper, I know where everything is and what place it's at if I'm looking for it. Nothing has its place. I looked for this yesterday all day. If I was in my camper, I would have known where it was at. So that's a negative if you're not camping. Plus, if you don't have a place for everything, uh, ugh, it's just a mess. And you don't get to take snacks and stuff. You can with a room, but not as much as you do. I mean, you have a whole full pantry full of groceries in a camper. It's kind of nice because it, when you're in a camper, you can just load it in your driveway and then load it, unload it when you get back. Where if you're in a room, every time you change rooms or you go from room to room, you gotta pack up everything and load it and take it back to the car and back and forth each time. So it's a lot more load and unloading. Now, the camping, there's a lot more pros than there is cons. Now, when you're camping, you can take everything with you, including the kitchen sink, if you know what I mean. In our camper, we get to take the dogs with us, unless you find a room that you can keep dogs in. And we have barky dogs when we're not there, so we would get probably kicked out of any room. So we do like being able to take our camper because our dogs get to go with us and enjoy. I sure am missing all these trails and stuff that we go on all the time. The cool thing is, is this is in our own backyard. It's about an hour from our house and I've never been here and it's really pretty. If you haven't watched my video about long exposures and waterfalls, you have to go watch that too. That turned out pretty. Now, it is easy on a room to pack up and move quicker because you just throw your stuff in your suitcase and take it to your car. Where with a camper, it's a set up and set down process. Our setup process is about a 40 minutes from beginning to end and our takedown is probably about an hour, maybe 45 minutes. We actually do it really fast. We have gotten it perfected even though we don't do it full time. Spider web on you. You do have to sign a waiver to come in here and I know why. <laughs> because it is hilly and these leaves are sliding out from under my feet. Just saying. Ooh. We're getting in the eyeball too. There's so many pros and cons to 
camping versus taking getting a room. And I think every scenario has a different what you would rather do. Like when we went to Colorado for four weeks, we pulled our camper. Now, when you're pulling your camper, when we went out there, we picked three locations once we were there to stay at and then adventure out because it is so much to pack down, pack up, load up, and move a lot. You would just be moving all the time and getting burned out. We ended up, like I said, doing those three locations and then just planning day trips from there to wherever else we wanted to go. And it worked out really well. But for Charleston, when we enjoyed James Island and if we were gonna stay in the campground and not go anywhere, I would say go to James Island. But having the truck and trying to park it downtown was a little more difficult. There's ways around it and different ideas to do it. So I think every scenario is different, whether you would like to camp or have a room. Going to Colorado, camping 100%. And I would rather plan a trip camping because I love going camping and we love our camper. But now, because we like to go on adventures, we don't stay at our camper much. We talk about that a lot. When we usually come back at night, we'll walk around or when we're leaving out to go places and everybody's sitting out by their camper, by the fire. We're not those people. We are going the whole time. We hardly ever just sit around at the camper. But I love having our camper because it's our stuff. It's and everything that we can need is in there. If you're ever up close to the horse pens for Woody area and just want to hike around a bunch of rocks, it's in Steele, Alabama. I would come up here. It's really pretty. I've really enjoyed this. I only had a short period of time before my show went today. But it was definitely nice. I left Bill at home. He has to work, which I'm working too. I've got to show a house here soon. But that's the good thing about my work is I can get out of the house if I need. And heck, this, I don't know if y'all can in your area, but if you could get out and do something like this, there is nobody here. So I'm self quarantined in this beautiful place right now. I hope this video helped you and maybe it didn't confuse you. I tried to do it without being confusing, but it's kind of hard to do the pros and cons thing when especially it's all a personal preference, whether it's worth it or not to go. I hope everybody is doing safe and in these weird times, I'm going to keep trying to make videos. Bill and Aaron, our son Friday is going to play golf at Greystone here in Hoover and he wants to video it. So if our next video is of Greystone golf, of him golfing, that means that he actually took real video and I can use it. If it's not, that means he usually, he'll say, I wanna film, I wanna film. He'll take the camera, he'll take two or three videos and then whew, he forgets because it is such a time consuming thing to take a camera and video as you go. Well, I hope you're enjoying our channel. We love that you're watching it and we would love for you to like and subscribe. Till next time.
The great thing about this Force 1040, they have RV camping sites with 30, 50 amp. They have 10 cabins that you can rent, and then they have primitive sites. And all of it's first come, first serve.